Earl Godwin. So you know he was exiled, and he had a son called Harold. But what about the rest of his life? He didn't just sit around watching TV for 50 odd years, mainly because TVs hadn't been invented, but that's besides the point. I present to you episode one of Interesting Topic, the podcast where I waffle on about a topic from history which has taken my interest, and hope somebody out there listens, and maybe finds it interesting too. No one knows the exact date, but most historians agree that Godwin was born around the 990s, maybe into the early thousands. His dad, Wolfnoff, was possibly a ruler in Sussex. Wolfnoff was a commander of the English fleet against the Vikings. However, dad's lands were seized when he was accused of treachery against the king at the time, Ethelred the Unready. Supposedly, Wolfnoff had sabotaged the English fleet in their battles against the Vikings. There were many conspiracies surrounding Wolfnoff's family, as they had close ties to the Vikings. This did, however, leave Godwin in a powerful position from a young age, and, as an added bonus, Godwin was left land in Compton, Sussex, which had been previously seized from his dad, Wolfnoff. In 1016, King Canute took power. Canute was an effective and respected ruler, so one of his first moves was to surround himself with people who had shown loyalty. Amongst these was Godwin, who gradually became closer and closer to the king. In 1017, Canute divided England into four earldoms, East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria and Wessex. Somewhere around the year of 1022, Godwin accompanied his now good mate King Canute on a trip to Denmark. Anyway, when they got back, Canute decided to make Godwin Earl of Wessex. Godwin also gained an upper hand when he married Canute's sister, Astrid, because that was the thing to do, marry strategically. Unfortunately, Canute died in 1035, and so too did the good times for Earl Godwin. By this time, Godwin had amassed more land than any other earl in England. Canute had left no heirs who were currently in or able to get to England, so Godwin saw this as an opportunity to try and pinch the throne for his own family. However, there were two actual heirs, both in exile in Normandy, Aethling Edward and his brother, Alfred. Canute's son, Harthur Canute, was trapped in Denmark, protecting the country from Norwegian invasion, meaning there was no chance of him coming over to rule. Harthur Canute's half-brother, Harald, also Canute's illegitimate son, was, however, hanging around in England, so became regent whilst they waited for the appointment of a new king. Godwin expectedly wasn't so keen on this. Another important player to consider was Emma of Normandy, Canute's wife and former wife of Ethelred the Unready. She didn't like the regency either. Soon the legitimate heirs Edward and Alfred made their way under separate escort into the country. Godwin managed to ambush and capture Alfred, laying waste to his large escort with alarming brutality. 600 men were killed in Guildford, Surrey. Deciding to cover up, Godwin lied and told Regent Harold that this move was in support of his regency. Eventually Godwin changed his mind about keeping Alfred prisoner and decided to murder him instead. Harthur Canute also eventually made it back to England and took over as king after Harold's death. Shortly after, however, he died in 1041 under extremely suspicious circumstances. Harthur Canute was probably murdered, possibly poisoned. Now I'm not going to point any fingers, but the one person who would have gained the most from his death would have been Earl Godwin. So draw your own conclusions. Emma of Normandy, whom I mentioned earlier, decided to back Edward's claim to the throne. Edward was her son, whom she had with Ethelred the Unready, so a legitimate heir. Edward became king, and is now known in our history books as Edward the Confessor. Godwin, however, saw this as an opportunity. After laying eyes upon Edward, he saw him as a weak person who would be easy to manipulate. Edward was scared and indecisive, so sought the help and backing of Godwin. Godwin, of course, promised him support and protection, as well as offering him his daughter, Edith's, hand in marriage. If Godwin's plan worked out, which it didn't, the two would have a child, and Godwin would have got his family into the royal bloodline. However, Godwin's fortune changed, and if you want to know what happened then, I've made a lovely little video about it. This one has some visuals to go with it as well. Go on, click it. I know you want to. <laughs>